This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Silvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What is going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is September 8th, 2022. Jonathan Osborne here. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Luke Silvio. What's up, Luke? I'm just hanging out, you know? We're uh, we're almost there, for what it's worth, and whatever that means. But we're almost there. Um, training camp, preseason, regular season. It's, almost, it's all coming together. I love when a plan comes together. How was uh how was your weekend, man? You had a pretty eventful weekend, no? My weekend was splendid. It was uh it was wonderful. I got to go to uh as I think I might have talked about it last episode that it was coming up. Obviously I've talked about college football coming up, as that's really the only thing happening sports wise in my life, besides now Eurobasket. But yeah, went to a Gator game at the swamp, hadn't been able to go to a game since twenty eighteen when I graduated, I think, uh, because we had moved uh, in 2019 to Nebraska, went to a Nebraska game, two games while I was out there and it was good. It was a good atmosphere. They do a really cool thing where like team scores when Nebraska scores the first touchdown, they lit up like these red balloons all up in the air. It looks really sick. A lot of people do it, but there's nothing like the swamp for me. It was just so much fun. Uh, 90,000, almost 91,000 fans in the stadium where I was able to see the Gators get a win, which was huge over the number seven team. Gators go from unranked to ranked 12th in the country. So we uh, will be playing against Kentucky, who is 20th in the country this Saturday. And I have already let my wife know after the Gators, especially are 12th, I was already leaning this way. I'm going to be at the game. It's another night game. Um, I'm going probably with a buddy of mine. She's like, Lauren's like 34 weeks pregnant too. And she went to the game with me. And by the second quarter, she was sitting out like on a bench, like away from everybody. She was like, I just she's like, I thought I could do it, but I just can't like it is so humid. And there's people just you're like packed like sardines. Thankfully, third quarter rolled around. I sat with her at halftime, but third quarter rolled around and some seats had kind of moved a little bit. People weren't as cramped with us. So we uh, we sat in our seats for the third, went up to uh, my buddy's press box for the fourth quarter, which is a lot of fun. Really different atmosphere in a press box, that's for sure. But um, but still, it was uh, it was a great time, and uh, the Gators won, so I couldn't complain. Yeah, I'm happy that they won. Shout out producer Kevin. Mm-hmm. Uh, we recorded like our recording schedule was kind of weird last week. Yeah, it's a little weird, this, weird week this week too. We're mm-hmm. actually we're recording this on Tuesday, so you're gonna hear some things that are like outdated to you all. But I want to shout out producer Kevin. He was in. Uh, Nola mm-hmm. at the Superdome there for FSU versus LSU and saw a pretty exciting game himself there. I know Luke's not all that happy about that, but that was an exhilarating the end was finish exciting. as well. We're, ha- we're happy for Kevin. At least I'm happy for Kevin. I'm not happy for Luke, Kevin. But... Um, I had LSU over 27 team points, and it, they had 24 at the very end, right? They score as or 23. Time expires. I'm thinking we're kicking an extra point. And then really, if LSU can even like kick a field goal, I'm pushing like at the very least here. I feel I feel pretty good. LSU like scored three drives in a row at the very end of the game after looking like total trash the first three quarters of the game. First. Yeah. First three quarters of the game. So I, I thought we were for sure we're headed for overtime. I'm sure everybody else did. I'm sure every FSU fan did. But FSU hats off to them for uh, blocking that extra point. I hate giving kudos to them, but it was a it was it was a good block and timely. They needed it because wheels were falling off. But it was a it was a fun ending. It was a fun like fourth quarter, I'll say. And then my Tar Heels with just the massive win over oh, Appalachian oh State. Oh my goodness, bro! Sixty three to sixty one. You know what's crazy? I turned that game on and North Carolina was down twenty one to seven. Yeah. Scored, I think, twenty eight unanswered points. Yeah, they were cooking at that point, and. It, and then I went and took a shower and I come back and like the game is like all of a sudden much closer. And then like the fourth quarter of that game was just like so ridiculous. But, yeah, App State's a good program yeah. and I think they were favored too. So, I mean, it was a it was a good win 
regardless. It was a yeah. high scoring. It, it was a fun. It was a fun game. It was a fun game to watch. The over under could have been 120, and that thing still would have hit, which is wild to Did, me. You, didn't you have the under at like 55 and a half or something crazy um, like that? Maybe, yeah, probably. No, I had the yeah, over. Yeah, it, I took the over. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, then yeah, you yeah. did all right. Yeah, no, I was, I was, right I was that. sleeping in the first quarter for sure. Yeah. So, um, anyways, we have, I think it's 21 days from today. We're recording this again on the 6th. 21 days from today will be the start of Orlando Magic training camp. Really excited about that. And then before the regular season starts, the final preseason game on October 14th at 7 o'clock, we're doing like a preseason night here at the Sixth Man Show. We want you guys to come out to the game with us, help us make some noise in that lower bowl. It should be a fun preseason finale again that is october 14th at seven o'clock against the Cavs. if you want to join us you can find tickets at fivo f-e-v-o dot m-e slash the six man show tickets are starting just at 28 dollars a piece and i think they go as high as 38 dollars a piece so they are selling quickly so if you guys again want to join us for that game fivo dot m-e slash the six man show luke this is the time of the year where NBA 2K, right before the season starts, where it comes out every single year, much like EA does with Madden, 2K makes a big deal about releasing, you know, individual player rankings, uh, the overalls, their you know attribute, you know whether you're a 67, whether you're a 99, whatever the case may be. And today we started to see some of those ratings uh, really roll out. Uh, most notably was Paolo Bancaro at a 78 overall. I think the same as Jabari Smith Jr. Uh, Jabari Smith Jr. also at a 78. And then I think Chet Holmgren came in around like a 77, 76. Yeah, 77, and yeah. then you got guys there like um, Keegan Murray, you know, Jade and Ivy kind of rounding out the top of the the rookie rankings there for 2K. I have the, the ratings here in front of us, Luke. I'll just kind of go through these briefly. Uh, last season, Luke and I had an episode where we really broke down every player's 2K ratings, and we went into a lot of depth with that. Um, right now, I don't know. It's because like the, if the game hasn't come out yet, I'm assuming I haven't really been paying a lot of attention to 2K. We talked about this on our last episode, but um, like Paolo specifically, we don't have all of his you know, individual attributes yet. So I don't feel the need to, to go through all of this, but I just want to go through like the magic overall. So um, number one on the team, Wendell Carter Jr. at an 83. When daddy. We all agree with that. That's pretty fair. Uh, Franz Wagner at an 80. Pretty much good with that. Uh, but then we've got Mo Bamba at a 79, Cole Anthony a 78, Jonathan Isaac a 78, Paolo Bancaro a 78, Markel Fultz a 77, Jalen Suggs a 75, Chuma Okiki a 75, Moritz Wagner a 75, Terrence Ross a 75, Gary Harris a 75, RJ Hampton a 73, Bull Bull a 71, Admiral Schofield a 69. Nice. Nice. Devin Kennedy with a 67, and then Caleb Houston and Kevon Harris have not been added to 2K yet, and they don't have ratings yet. Mm-hmm. So is there anything that stuck out to you on that? Like anything really egregious to you? Um, egregious? I don't know. Um, I will say, and I don't know if this was like the beginning of last year when these ratings happened or if it was at the end of 2K22, but seems like the biggest jump by far was Franz Wagner, which we are not shocked by. He was a 74 last year and now is getting his up to rating up to an 80. So that's pretty nice. Uh, nice to see that at least 2K is recognizing that Franz was one of the best. How rookies. recently do you think Franz's overall has been updated? I don't like in 2K22. No, 2K23. Like, do you think this? He was an eighty, like this time last week. Oh, or right. Do you think his most recent Eurobasket Euro performances? They're like, oh snap, we got to up Franz's overall. Maybe one. Maybe it was a seventy-nine to an eighty. Yeah, yeah. I think I, like seventy-eight, seventy-nine. But, probably. But, or, do we, do, but, but also, do we trust that like two K is that in tune? Like, I give him credit for being a little I in tune, know. but I don't know if they're over there checking the Eurobasket stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, we much else we would probably on. say that we would have personally bumped him up after his Eurobasket performances, but uh, I don't know. Is there anything there that that you find to be egregious at any point in terms of like comparatively or just where they're at in general? 
I just feel like Mo Bamba as the third highest rated Magic player feels a little weird. Obviously, they're giving him a ton of credit for his like three point percentage and like right. his run protection, like his blocking. That's got to be bringing that up like like a ton, I would say. Um, but yeah, I mean, him being rated higher than like Cole Anthony, I mean, what Jonathan is Isaac hasn't played in two years, so it's kind of like eh, what, what's Bamba's rating right now? I don't now? really know what's it. Bamba's a seventy nine. Okay, last year, again, preface this again with saying, I don't know if this is the end of 2K22 or the start. Regardless, Mo Bamba was a 76. So he was like tied for third, essentially, or fourth, actually. There was a few different players, but he was the same overall as Robin Lopez. Robin was also a 76. Yeah, I mean, shooting 38% from the three-point line is certainly going to help you there. And I mean, blocking he's shots. He's at 81 three-point percentage there. Yeah, I, I again, I wasn't able to see this from uh, 2kratings.com. Uh, I wasn't able to see, like, the real individual attributes right. for each player that was there. But I'm sure his you know block shot is 85-plus, you know, somewhere yeah. around there. Now, if you want to throw, like, basketball IQ in there and, you know, consistency, that kind of stuff. Post-offense. That's where you would... Yeah, post offense. I mean, post defense. I mm-hmm. mean, he's really not a post defender. He no. most of those blocks last year were help, like help side blocks, mm-hmm. just kind of you know rotating. Now Wendell, we know the post defense is you know certainly should be up there, but um, yeah. Beyond that, you know, nothing really agreed. What just Paolo seventy eight. Jai is a seventy eight, which I'm just like, eh, what are you, what are you going to do with Jai? I think at one point Jai was like an eighty. He's an, he was an a few eighty years last, ago. He was an eighty mistaken. last year. And but yeah, he hasn't played in a couple of years. You don't really know what you're going to get out of him, you know, at, at this point. But I'm fine with a 78. Um, if he comes back and he's like Jonathan Isaac of old, like to me, that's a like the defense alone. He's got to be like what was, 83, 85, somewhere around there. What was Chuma's rating? Did do we have it? Chuma is a 75. So Jalen Chuma, Moritz, Terrence, and Gary. To me, that's egregious. All of those guys being clumped together. Is pretty crazy. They're all a seventy-five. Jalen was a was a seventy-seven and twenty-two, and Chuma was a seventy-five. Yeah, that that I mean that makes sense to me. It's like Moritz Wagner, Terrence Ross, and Gary Harris all being a seventy-five just feels weird. Yeah, like to me, Gary should be like closer to like a seventy-seven. Terrence, it's like Terrence is obviously getting discredited because of the season that he had last year understandably so, but I just feel like he's still better than a 75. I feel like he's a 77. Who'd you say? 78. Who? Terrence. Oh, Terrence. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. I was, I was just looking at these ratings. It's kind of wild that this says Gary Harris last year was a 73. How is that? Yeah. I don't know how the dude shoots like 38% from the three point line. I mean, is 82, is a is a his three point rating is an eighty two, which is literally the best on the entire team. So mm-hmm. and and he has a I guess a perimeter lockdown badge, which you know I can understand that, but a seventy five for Gary just feels low. Yeah, don't really like that. And you know R J at a seventy three, Bull Bull at a seventy one, that feels high mm-hmm. honestly. Um, Admiral Schofield at a sixty nine, Devin Kennedy sixty seven. I know Devin wasn't happy happy about the sixty seven, but you know, he's he's. We'll played, see what happens. He's played thirteen games. That's it. That's what it is. Yeah, he played. You know, but limited amount of. They games. got nothing to go he's off. Really of. a special sample size too small. Right, right. But that and is that's why Caleb 2K. Houston, Kavon Harris. I would expect Caleb to be like a seventy. You know, once he's in the game, Kavon Harris. Don't really know what to expect there. Yeah. No, I was just gonna I, add here. Two K. Two K starts everybody low. Right, like they start a lot of players at like a 96, like a lot of those star players, so they can get up to a 98 as the year goes on, maybe a 99 if they're balling out. MVPs obviously get the treatment. Same thing with all these other players. Paolo, you know, being an 80, you could easily see him. He's a 78. Oh, 78, sorry. Should be an 80. Should be an 80. Should be an 80. 78, but they do that to give themselves some leeway so that they can give some generous tick-ups there, his first like 30 ball that he has. Uh, and then by the time he drops like a, a 60 ball this year, they'll, they'll bump up to like an 86, but you know, I, I tweeted this out when I saw people cause like Paolo's rating, I think came out 
yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, or some of the ratings came out yesterday and everyone was freaking out on Twitter. And I tweeted, I stopped taking NBA 2K seriously when 2K did. Mm -hmm. Like they, they clearly don't take it seriously. They know that they can put minimal effort into these games every year with minor updates. People are still going to buy it. People are still going to pay VC and all this kind of stuff. So like I said on the last episode, until we all stop buying VC and buying 2K every year, 2K is just going to continue to do what they do every single year. The, the fact that like Ronnie 2K is still the face of 2K is like that's really the best that we can do. Wow. That's the that's the best ambassador that we can have for the game at this point. Really strange. Like, let's get Kenny in there. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody loves Kenny. Make make Kenny the maybe he's been approached about this, but make Kenny the 2K ambassador. Yeah. If they did that, I would consider buying 2K. <laughs> yeah. But Ronnie, you know, neither here nor there. I know Demarcus Cousin isn't a fan of him, so. <laughs> Whatever, not going to make a big deal about these 2K ratings. Well, we just did. They're meaningless. But, but yeah, yeah, we, we gave them their seven own segment minutes about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, it's the off season. Baby. You gave them a what segment last week do? too. You hate 2K. I really do. It re- <laughs> I just, I hate. It's just become this thing where we're just going to put out a game every single year just to make money. Like they're the the like the the love of the craft is gone, Luke. It's just mm. I've seen this in, for the good in of the all game. of my favorite video game. Yeah, for the good of the game, for the love <laughs> of the game. Just all across the board. I've seen it affect all of like my most favorite games ever. I used to love 2K. Um I used to love the Assassin's Creed games. We're really going off on a tangent <laughs> here, but like the Call of Duty games for a long time, they were just turning those out every single year, just putting out like crap games at times just to put a game out there just to make money. Used to see these major like game developers take like four and five years before they would release another game. And then the game would come out. Everybody would be so hyped about it and the game would be amazing. And you just never get that anymore. I'm trying to remember the last time like a, a, a console like release had like a triple a title that I was just like blown away by. And it's been a long time. I can't even remember one. So yeah, I get very passionate about people just releasing crappy video games every year because that's just what everybody does now. It's true. All right, we're going to go ahead and shout out our patrons before we talk about Franz Wagner. If you have been living under a rock or you are new to the show and you're wondering how can I help financially support the six-man show to allow them to do great things like giveaways and upgrade equipment and just overall make better quality content for our listeners, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six-man show. At patreon.com slash the six-man show, we have three awesome tiers with a variety of different benefits that you can choose from, again, to help financially support the show. One thing, if you're not a patron, uh, if you join right now, you will be shouted out on our new episode, our next episode. We shout out our brand new patrons on every episode. And then if you're really feeling frog, you really want to help us out. If you sign up as a Hall of Fame tier patron, we will shout you out on every episode. Like I'm about to shout out Court Cousins, Armin, Carson Tulo, Jonathan Borges, Norm L., Magic Player History, Bailey, Wiffle, Michael Salapong, Franz Goaded for Show, Ryan Singh, The Distract, I'm Ron Burgundy, <laughs> Pierre A, Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Lil Penny, Drum, Danimal, Dutto 15, Bobby Skinner, Nate Donnelly, Goaty 93, and Teddy Sylvia, Luke's mom. Thank you guys so much for the support. You liked that Ron Burgundy, didn't you? I did. I did. You rehearsed that, don't lie. Pretty nice. Yeah, sweet. Okay, Luke, let's talk about our boy Franz Wagner. Mm-hmm. Or if you've been watching the ESPN broadcast, his name might be Franz Wagner. It <laughs> might be Franz Wagner. It might be Franz Wagner. It just depends. But they certainly don't know how to say Franz Wagner, which is the correct pronunciation of his name. So since the last time that you guys heard from us, uh, Germany and Franz have played uh like three games, actually. They played Saturday and Sunday. Uh, They played today on Tuesday. We'll talk about those games right now. So on Saturday, uh, Germany had a win over Bosnia and Herzegovina, 92-82. to In that game, Luke Franz had 18 points, 6 of 13 from the floor, 2 of 4 from the three-point line, 4 of 4 from the charity stripe, 5 rebounds, 1 steal, 1 block. On Sunday, I was driving to church watching this game. (laughs) 
They had a win over Lithuania in double overtime. I got to watch the first half. Then I had to go into church. And then when I came home later on that evening, I watched the rest of the game in a double overtime thriller, 109 to 107. In this game, Franz had 32 points. He had 18 points in the first half. It was electric, 12 of 20 from the floor, 4 of 7 from behind the arc, 4 of 4 from the free throw line, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 steal, and 2 blocks. And then on Tuesday, this was earlier today when we're recording, they had an 80 to 88 loss to Slovenia, their first loss of Eurobasket. Franz had his worst game of the tournament so far. Uh, eight points, two of seven from the floor, two of five from the three-point line, two of two from the free throw line, three rebounds, two assists, two steals, three turnovers. Luke, in this game, Luca had 36 points. Their next and final group group stage game is going to be on Wednesday. So this is obviously before you all are listening to this. That game is going to be at 220. And then their next game will most likely be Saturday. Um that is going to be September 10th. So, Luke, what did you think of Franz um, and Germany's performances from this past weekend? Well, uh, he is just, he's incredible. He really is. Uh, it was unfortunate that, you know, he had kind of the off game that he did against Slovenia. But with his other games, he was able to make up for it. I mean, the fact that he had that game and still at this point when we're recording this, He's still averaging 16 and a half points a game and five rebounds, two assists, basically. It speaks volumes about him. I think it, everybody, obviously, we're biased, but I think we can see it and everybody can start to see it too. That Franz Wagner is just special. And I, I really appreciate Eurobasket getting us through these last few weeks, really, because without it, we don't get to see Franz Wagner play. We don't get to see a lot of times when players are progressing through the summer, you don't get to see the finished product. We feel like we're able to kind of see Franz get better in real time and just through his off season and through Eurobasket, you know, obviously you had like the the pre tournament stuff, you know, that led up to this point. Just able to get glimpses of Franz and to see him play full games. It's just been a lot of fun. And I think that I will forever appreciate Eurobasket and the tournament being put on in general because it does give you a chance, especially if you have a young blossoming player like Franz. You get to see him just get better. And it's something that like they discount Summer League because of the talent there, and rightfully so. We all know that. But with the Eurobasket, like these are hoopers. Like Drogic in international play is a hooper. Patty Mills international play is a hooper. Like a lot of people just in general in international play are very good. And you get to see it put on full display. Even NBA players who maybe not, you know, aren't as good. Schroeder gets to take the reins of Germany pretty much. Debate that if you want. I, you know, is he is what oh, he brother. is at this point, but he gets featured and you get to see a look at Schroeder, but you know, then you get to see Franz and Franz has just been crushing it in his role, knows his, you know, lane. Maybe he knows his lane a little too well, but I'm sure we get into that. So you touched on his averages uh, right now through four games in Eurobasket. Franz is averaging 16 and a half points per game. Are you ready for these splits? 51% from the floor, 47% from the three point line, 100% from the free throw line. Wow. Uh, 4.8 rebounds, 1.8 assists, 1.3 steals. Does it say how many free throws he's like averaging a game like attempts? I think he's like six of six from the floor. Or something okay, like that. so it's so not a huge... no. I'm sorry. So it's a total no ten, probably probably somewhere around three. I would guess like two or three. Um, it was four versus Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was four against Lithuania. Yeah. It was two today against Slovenia. Okay, so it might be there. I, I didn't. Ten I didn't 10. pull up like the free throw attempts per game. Yeah, um, and that's just the last three games. That's not right. Um, you know the the first game that they had against France. Um, so I'm not totally sure there, but. 51, 47, 100% right now. That's yeah. absolutely bonkers. Like 50, 45, 100% club for Franz Wagner. You know, four games in Eurobasket. Yeah, he's a stud. You would like to see him get, you know, with numbers like that, you would definitely like to see him get some more uh, field goal attempts. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. Let him get the ball a bit more. Yeah, I think that that's, that's kind of the issue. We talked about it, right? Like I said it last week. Yeah. International play is very much like a seniority thing. That's why, 
you know, Schroeder, like I said, gets to really call the shots. But Franz, man, he's just going to do what you ask of him. I, I think there really is only so much he can do. But uh, he's making the most of it. That's for sure. He's getting he's garnering attention everywhere. Dirk had a really cool quote about him. Sam Vecini, I believe, of the Athletics still had a, a quote about him as well, just like praising him and for what he's able to do and his ability on the court. It's really cool to see him get all this attention. So let's really quickly, let's talk about just like Germany as a whole and just like their chance to like really make a run in this tournament. And then we'll talk about like where we've seen Franz like really improve Uh, because like sort of some of it sort of feels like people are just now finding out about Franz. Oh, for sure. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but like for me and sort of like Franz's limited role offensively, uh, I mean, he's the second leading scorer on the team, so I don't know how much you can say it's limited, but we all feel like he needs the ball more. And today against Slovenia, at some points it was like, Franz, you just need to go and get the ball. Like, Good things happen, and and this is going to sound like a shot at Dennis Schroeder, but good things just happen in general for Germany when the ball is not in Schroeder's hands. Like when it's Franz or it's you know Ost or any of these other guys, and the ball is like moving from side to side, like they're getting like really good looks most of the time. But when Dennis just just decides to pound the ball like and like just dribble and dribble and dribble and then try to make a play for himself, Germany just gets like stuck in the mud. Um, offensively, they, the offense really gets gummed up. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> so I know Luke hates that term, so I had to say it. <sighs> but um, I do feel like if Germany, like Germany has a real chance to make a run at this tournament, like two teams that are one, like in the top five in terms of favorites, Slovenia and France, they beat Slovenia like two weeks ago in a friendly or a week and a half ago in a friendly. They already beat France in this tournament, you know, to start the group stage. And now, they they were like right in this game into the last few minutes against Slovenia and they really didn't play well at all. Like you could argue whether or not Slovenia did, but Luca it did. just feels like if Germany is going to Luke, Luca certainly did. Luca is Slovenia. If, so, so Slovenia did play well. Hey, Drogic also played really well today. Yeah. I mean, he, he kind of put did. the game away for Slovenia, He did. but if Germany is going to have a deep run in this tournament, Franz is going to have to be more involved than he already is. Yeah. I just don't know that we get it. I I don't know that it's going to happen. I I think that Germany's sitting back saying the same things, right? Like, we didn't play that great. We were still, like, went to... Like, I don't think Germany's going to be like, we have an issue, right? Like, at the end of the day, Franz is second leading scorer on the team. He's playing well, relatively. And, you know, it, maybe they just don't think there's an issue. And... To be fair, there might not. I mean, a lot, you know, some of this could just be that, you know, we want as Magic fans, Franz to just be featured and be the feature guy just to see. But the reality is, at the end of the day, I really think Franz is like a number two, like just in general. Like, I think, I don't know that I ever think that Franz is going to be a number one. So part of me is like, yeah, it'd be cool if he'd be featured on Germany, but I just don't know that it's realistic, like, for us to think that he's going to be a number one, you know, when it's all said and done, I just, I'm, I'm not sold on it. Obviously it's very early in his career, but he just seems like he has all the characteristics of a number two guy. He's never going to be irritated about a guy getting more shots than him or featured more than him. He just stays in his lane and whatever you ask him to do, he's going to do it. To me, he's like the, like the highest level two kind of guy that you can get, like saying that he's a number two, potentially is what you mean. Right. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, like poten- like not right now. Obviously, right. Yeah, but yeah. He I just could to potentially be like the highest level two kind of guy. Like to me, he could be every bit as good as like a Chris Middleton. I think he could even be better than Chris Middleton. Um, like Chris Middleton is a, a decent defender, but I think Franz just has like more like playmaking chops and just more like defensive versatility. Um, and like maybe even a little like a touch more athletic than Chris Middleton. But we just saw Chris Middleton two seasons ago. Now you can. You know, there were some injury stuff that happened in that playoff run that allowed the Bucks to, you know, get to the point and you know to win the title. But you could say that about every championship team so essentially. About the Bucks last year. That they did that they injured. Oh, yeah. If Chris Middleton doesn't yeah. get hurt, you know, they very well could have, you know, made yeah. it to the finals and you know, maybe won the finals. So um saying that, oh, you know, he might be a little bit better than Chris Middleton, like that's still very good. And that's, and a, that's a number two that is good enough to to win you, you know, 
help win you a championship. Just looking, you know, if I'm you know the head coach of Germany, and I'm you know breaking down some of these splits here. So right now, uh, Dennis Schroeder is is leading the team and scoring 18.3 points per game, but he's averaging 35 percent from the floor, 20 percent from the three point line, and 86 percent from the free throw line. Like, well, yeah, Franz is doing it just so much more efficient. I mean, you talk about a guy that just shouldn't be a number one in general. It's Dennis Schroeder. Like, we we know who Dennis Schroeder is. In those splits, like that's what happens when a guy who has too much on his plate, that's what happens. He's got too much on his plate, leading Germany, and you get splits like that. Like they just, it is what it is. Which is why I wonder, like, if we would like, if us like asking for Franz to be the main guy, like, would his splits look similar at this point? You know what I mean? Like, I will point you to December of last year. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> It wasn't that bad. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and that's against, you know, NBA competition. And that's something that I I do kind of want to talk about. Like, sure. Like we're saying Franz play really well, but, and I guess we can start this conversation here is like, where do we think that he's like really improved? Like looking at his game, comparing it to what we saw last year, for me, it's a little bit difficult to evaluate that because although it's a very competitive tournament, it's still not, you know, a full roster of NBA guys that you're going up against every night. You know, like they're, they're getting ready to play hungry. Right. And uh, as long as they beat hungry, I think the worst they can finish is second in the group stage. If they beat hungry and France beats Slovenia tomorrow on Wednesday, then they'll, they'll finish first in the group stage. Hungary doesn't have a single NBA player on their roster. Yeah. So we're at least for me, what I'm really seeing is like, the shooting like Mm. 47% from the three point line. And yes, the international line is a little bit closer than the three point line. But to me, that's where I've seen the most improvement from him is knocking down like the three ball. Like I, I, in terms of like navigating the offense, like getting to the rim, I'd say that's about on par for what we saw last season from him. Um, Now I'm not saying Franz hasn't improved. I'm not trying to say that at all, but I think it'll be a lot more evident once we get into the regular season and you have like two or three games, like, Oh, Franz is much better at this now and this now. And, and yeah. these kind of things, I think just the inner and like the style of play, you know, internationally, I think it's a little difficult to really like hone in on all the things that he's improved on, at least for me. Yeah. I mean, I think it's also still a little skewed, like his 47% from three, that's only 17 attempts so far. And like these group in the group stage. So is he a 47% three point shooter? No. Like that's just not the case. Too small Steph sample Korean size. Forty seven percent. Exactly. Too small sample size. Like you said, line a little bit closer. But what I will say that the confidence that Franz Wagner also has as well. Like he had a sidestep three. I believe it was late in the game against Slovenia today. Definitely the second half. Um, had a sidestep three. I believe he pump faked. His defender kind of flew by him. He stepped. You know, sidestepped and was able to hit the three. It just feels like any time now that I see him take a three, I think it's going in. Like he, right. even though it is skewed, and I we we've said it, and I and I will say that fine, but I still have more confidence that the three ball is going in. And I don't know if it's like you know just the international like court, like the the you know, where they're playing in Germany, like that sort of stuff. Maybe he's just way more comfortable too. That honestly could be a thing, um, but. I I do think that he just like his three point shooting. There just seems to be more comfort and I'll be very surprised if we don't see a sidestep three very often when it comes to the NBA season. He's just, he has really impressed me in his shot making abilities in general transition. He, there was a, a, he got a steal today. I believe Luca passed the ball and he was able to intercept, get in the passing lanes, takes the ball down to the other end. He gets fouled. But he's like pounding the ball to get down the court, making these long strides. That was late in the game, too. That was late in the game, yeah. And and he was just able to just continue to use his body to shield himself from defenders and then ultimately gets fouled at the rim. But it was plays like that where I was like, man, like he's just so confident. Like I'm getting the ball. I'm not looking for 
you know, maybe a quicker guy or whatever. Like I trust my finishing abilities at the rim compared to anybody else on the court right now. And, and just a lot of times he exudes that confidence right now. And I'm really, really hoping that it translates to the NBA season and that he just continues to get more comfortable. I just feel like he's even gotten better through Eurobasket, which is crazy because it's it's not been that many games, but including those qualifier uh, or whatever they are, like pre-tournament games, he has looked so good. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, like his body, like he's obviously worked on his body this summer. He looks a little bit bigger, but the confidence, and I'm glad that you brought that up, is a very real thing. I was watching the um, interview that he had after the double overtime game against Lithuania, I believe that was. And if you compare that to like um, post game interviews that he had like last season, or even like the halftime interviews that Dante mm-hmm. does, you know, as long as they're winning at halftime, um, it, do they only do those if they're winning at halftime? I feel like they always do them if they're winning at halftime, but they only do the post game if they win. Sure. I'm sure Ke- producer Kevin is like, how do you not know that? I was idiot, I course. was in Nebraska and watching whatever stream I could find. It wasn't always Magic stream. That's my excuse. Right. Hmm. I'm pretty sure they always do it at halftime. They only do it after the game if they win. Somebody somewhere is going to correct me on that. I, I welcome that. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Regardless, it was after the game, and they were asking him like about the game. And again, you just compare that to interviews from last season, and he just seems like a different kid. He just seems so much more confident. Um, like doesn't seem as like timid or as shy as he did at times with media availability last year. And I don't know, like you said, it's a comfort thing. Is it because like they're in Germany and this whole, like for them, the whole tournament is going to be in Germany. Like their group stage. I haven't seen those. Is he speaking German round of 16? No, it's in, it's in English. That's what was funny to me. Mm. Um, there's a lot of, uh, like German and from other team players that, um, are you know n- natively English speaking, but are playing for these international teams. So even in the timeouts, you, it's funny because like you're hearing the coaches speak right. you know, English, and I think you were you it heard that yeah. in, in one of like the pre tournament. You're like, wait a minute, what's yeah. going on here? Yeah. Um. But yeah, they. It's. I mean, we speak English. Who cares? But right. Um. Yeah. It was funny because I I I really thought like in Germany that the interview was going to be in German. But no, it was in English. Was it ESPN? I would, that you were I would have had it. It was yes. Well, no, it was on the. It was on FIBA's site. Oh, it was FIBA's that is site, interesting. And it was like his, I was gonna say thing. maybe yeah. he just like his not his personality is different, but maybe like just like I his, would have had no idea if he was more comfortable. If it was in German, I would have had no idea whether or not he I was just like thought more you were out here getting like closed captioning or something. Um, no, not at all. Yeah. So, well, yeah. I mean. That yeah, that confidence aspect. I think it's real. I hope that it it translates into just like demanding more, right? Like, I just don't know that it will. I just don't know if that's him, yeah. man. And I think that you know, it's something we've obviously talked about since last season. I just don't know if it's really in his personality to demand anything. I, He's so competitive, though. Like you saw it today. Right. He basically forced Luca into a travel, and he's like. Yeah, like screaming and stuff like you can tell he has that competitive fire but like he just might not have that part of him that just says like i'm the guy like i have to be the guy i have to take over right now and to me that's the when we talk about like his potential that's the only thing to me that can hold this kid back is himself like i really believe he can be as good or as effective as he wants to be yeah what what about franz you know for for people that you know maybe don't pay attention as much to the magic or people who are like just now getting into the magic. What would you say like from what we've seen from Franz so far that like when we say that he's special, why is that? Why do you think that? I think so when he got drafted, the main thing going around the main quote, everybody said who really didn't know too much about Franz, but basically read all the same scouting reports. We said it. Right. Of course. Yeah. Because all we had really done is read those scouting reports and after the fact watched film on Franz, really, and in full, I should say, to get more familiar. But like he's good at everything. Like he's decent at everything. He's not elite at anything. And he just makes the lives of his teammates easier. It's something that we have clung to. Like that it is true that he makes his life, the lives of his teammates easier. Where it has really been different and he where he has separated himself up to this even to this point in Eurobasket is that he is just much better at what we didn't under like 
he wasn't a, a good shooter necessarily at Michigan. We've seen him become in Eurobasket. He's looked very confident at times during the NBA season. He shot the ball well. So he is just better than what we thought, like in, in those areas. Like, yes, he. I don't know that he's just decent at everything. I think he's good at everything. He's really freaking good at everything. Yeah. And, and so it's just like elevated in terms of what his abilities are. And I think he is just one of the most complete and like has the potential to be like one of the most complete NBA players that there are in the league. Not to say he's going to be a superstar next year or anything like that, but everything is there. He, he is absolutely, he is on track to do that. And he still does make everything easier for everybody around him. And he, it's because he just accepts everything. He accepts what you want him to do. He's going to make the team better and he's going to give 110%. That's something they highlighted on the stream today. Like, man, Franz Wagner, even if he's not having a good game, he is putting everything out there. He is going 100 miles an hour, doing everything to the best of his ability. And that's what you really have to admire about him. Not only that, but it's it's like the basketball IQ. It's wherever he is on the floor, if it's offense, if it's defense, he knows exactly where to be. He knows where everyone else is supposed to be. On offense, he's making the correct cuts. Germany isn't really taking advantage of that skill set that I would say. You know, they're not running a lot of um, you know planned cuts for him. And if he is cutting, he's not exactly being found on those cuts. Like you said, he he does everything like really well. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're we're seeing the shoot the shooting here in Eurobasket. I think last year was thirty six percent, so an above average three point shooter. The whole month of December, we basically saw a point Franz where he can bring the ball up, he can initiate the offense. Like you pointed out today, he's running the fast break, you know, getting to the line or trying to make plays for other people. Yeah. He's a versatile defender in this tournament so far. We've seen him guard. Evan Fournier today we saw him you know guarding Luka Doncic uh you know at stretches last year we saw him guarding you know like a a Trey Young you know in 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 certain situations so um like the the defensive versatility but for me what really makes him so special is at 6'10 maybe even 6'11 the way that he's able to move with and without the ball and then it's the playmaking the vision that he has like having the vision is one thing like having the right idea of where to make the pass, having the ability to make the pass is completely different. He had this play uh, on Sunday, or was it Sunday? Yeah, Sunday against Lithuania, the double overtime game, where he drove, drew two defenders, and then just had this slick little dump-off pass Mm -hmm. to Tice. When I saw it, I could not believe that a kid his size moving as well as he does, is able to make that read and to make that pass. So now people are finding out about Franz Wagner, and that's why, again, it's the dead part of summer, especially for the NBA, Um, but like really kind of sports in general, things are starting to ramp up again with college football coming back and NFL football starting this Sunday, which I'm very excited about. But you're just seeing all this talk, you know, around Franz Wagner. You you mentioned Dirk Nowitzki talking about him. You mentioned, you know, Sam Bassini. But everybody, like you know, in the that is paying attention to, to Eurobasket. The big takeaway is just like this kid is really freaking good, and I'm hoping that he's going to just use this as like a a launch pad for his confidence. Yeah. Just take all of this into the next season with the Orlando Magic, because man, if this kid just like keeps improving, he's really really special, and I don't see anything in his way except him not telling himself that he's the best player on the floor at times and just going and getting the ball and doing whatever he wants because unless you're throwing a double at him at this point, you, you can't stop him. And just been a ton of fun to watch and uh, excited to see him through the rest of Eurobasket. Again, I think Germany has a, a real chance to make a deep run in the tournament, especially if they lean on Franz a little bit more offensively. But yeah, he's just been so much fun. I'm glad this guy is on our team. The fact that we have Franz Wagner and Paolo Bancaro, like everyone else is very good, but it's like for where we are in terms of the rebuild, it's almost like it's all a bonus. Yeah. Like being roughly a little over two years into a rebuild to already have a guy like Paolo and a guy like Franz, like we are, we are knocking it out of the park. 
Yeah. I mean, this is this rebuild should go much faster than the general public and NBA fan expected it. So we'll see. But uh, we're we're in good hands. I, I have no doubt about it. Winning the first pick does not hurt, you know what I mean, when it comes to a rebuild. So had we ended up third or fourth, we'd probably be having a different conversation right now. But yeah, Paolo, it's, Franz, the future. It's crazy that right. even though we value Paolo and we understand his value, that like he's incredible and has every opportunity in the world to be the number one on this team when it's all said and done and be that guy. It's still crazy to me that the number one pick in Palo and just the number one pick in general feels to me like the cherry on top because we didn't get to see this team healthy last year. Like, and you have guys like Franz getting you excited about it. I mean, you touched on all of the exciting things going on, but it's crazy that like, and it just shows how well it is going that Palo does feel like just like that added bonus that, oh, by the way, could be the guy that like leads this team through a championship one day. Paolo is like, you know, I woke up, I had a cup of coffee, I'm sitting at my desk, work's going great, the kids are behaving, like I'm just having a swell day, I get a promotion, mm. and then someone just comes out of nowhere with like a syringe of epinephrine just straight to my heart, <laughs> and just like, <gasps> I'm alive, like, it just it makes everything so much better, the fact that... I really thought you were going to walk in and say that somebody just walked in and gave you like a million dollars, and I was like, okay, hey, this is great, and then you bring out the epinephrine, oh my god goodness all right yeah. yeah no you remember you probably don't remember this movie but when jason statham was like first getting really popular he had a movie uh, that was called crank and basically if his heart rate fell below like a certain like beats per minute i think it would explode and he would die so like one of the things that he did was like inject epinephrine like right into his heart to keep his like heart rate going so mm. shout out jason statham i know you don't listen but that was a, a shout out to you that was a little uh reference there mm. so mm-hmm but yeah, I, I, I feel the exact same way that you do. But Luke, I feel like that's going to do it for us this episode. Yeah, yeah, I think we're done. So uh, one more group stage game on Wednesday. You guys already know the result of that. Uh, you know exactly where Germany uh, ended up in terms of... I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say Germany finishes first in the group stage. I think France beats Slovenia. I think Germany beats Hungary. And I think... Um, Germany is the first team coming out of the group stage uh, in Group B, I think that is. So they would be B1 in the tournament. But you guys will know how all of that stuff goes. Um, plenty of stuff to, to look forward to. Some more fun episodes coming your way. Again, if you want to join us for the preseason night, October 14th at 7 o'clock, the preseason finale at home versus the Cavs, you can get your tickets at FIVO.me slash the Six Man Show. Again, that's FIVO, F-E-V-O dot M-E slash the six man show that's going to do it for this episode for luke sylvia this has been jonathan osborne you guys are listening to the six man show and we will catch you guys next time see ya thanks for listening to the sixth man show be sure to subscribe on itunes and spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone if you enjoyed the show please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review it helps out the show a lot Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Six Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!